My name is Fotinis Tilianopoulou. I'm here from Greece, but uh, right now I'm Secretary General of FENS, uh, a position I've been holding for the last two years. So um, I guess today is uh, a good opportunity to talk about the upcoming FENS Forum in Barcelona. Well, okay, the FENS Forum is the top neuroscientific event uh, held in Europe. It's an international event. It, it includes speakers from all over the world, the top neuroscientists presenting uh, cutting-edge science, uh, topics that are at the forefront of neuroscience, so it's where every neuroscientist, whether senior or junior, wants to be. Uh, it happens every two years. Uh, the program is made through a very uh, competitive and strict process. So really, the very best of science is being presented. Um, I can tell you the uh, program uh, in a summary. There are nine plenary lectures. Uh, we can talk about that a bit later because they're really superb. Uh, there are 59 symposia ranging in topics. We can uh, uh, say something about that later. Uh, there are some workshops, practical workshops, happening before or after, as, as well as satellite events happening before or after, and 12 special lectures sponsored by very prestigious um, foundations. Uh, for example, the uh, recipients of the Brain Prize, uh, a new prize in neuroscience, which is 1 million euros. It's like a Nobel Prize, but in neuroscience. Uh, they will present their work uh, in, the, in this forum. Uh, and then there are a number, uh, 10 or 20, special events. So it's a very rich scientific program of very high caliber. And at the same time, uh, there is a very uh, interesting social program, hmm. social-scientific program. And of course, Barcelona is a very challenging city where people can uh, have the chance to see very interesting sights, um, interesting nightlife, for the young ones at least. Um, and even within the uh, Fence Forum program, there is an event called Jump the Fence, uh, which has a tradition. It has been held in past forums. Uh, and it's for the young and the young at heart, uh, which happens uh, at night throughout the days of the uh, Congress. So it's where everyone should be. Uh, science is top notch, uh, and social life, both in terms of meeting people for establishing um, scientific networks or for the younger finding jobs, postdocs or jobs, and for the senior to find young, brilliant postdocs, uh, the place to be is the Fence Forum in Barcelona in July. Well, um, I would uh, focus on the plenary lectures, mm -hmm. uh, which as you can understand is really the top of the top. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm just taking a few examples, of course we can't go through all of them, but all of them are uh, excellent and very hot and represent hot topics in neuroscience today. Uh, for example, uh, the first lecture, which is sponsored by the Kavli Foundation, the Kavli Foundation is a very rich foundation that supports science and specifically neuroscience, mm -hmm. and they have given a grant to FENS for this uh, lecture. Uh, it will be given by Matthew Rushworth, who is at Oxford in the UK, and uh, I'm sure you'll agree that this is very interesting. He will talk to us about the brain areas involved in reward-driven behavior. As we all know that reward is a very powerful driver and it underlies just about all learning and decision making. Mm -hmm. And he will tell us about studies both in humans by neuroimaging and in lower animals using different techniques of the areas of the brain that are involved in this reward-guided behavior. So that's 
of a very interesting topic, uh, a very challenging and actually very debated uh, topic is the one that Henry Markham will deliver. Uh, he works in Lausanne, in Switzerland, and he's in charge of the famous now Blue Brain Project. It's a project that has, a go has as a goal to simulate the brain on supercomputers. Uh, the approach they're using involves a systematic integration of all biological data and knowledge of the brain as accurately as mathematically and technically possible. They have developed something called the Blue Brain Facility and now the, this project is one of the flagship projects of the EU and a massive consortium has been coalesced in Europe to launch the Human Brain Project, which will be equivalent as the Human Genome Project of uh, a decade ago, uh, that aims to build on uh, such strategies to collect data from lower species, from human data, and all our knowledge of the brain in order to be able to simulate the human brain and its diseases. It's a very talked about. Um, it is a little bit controversial, it has to be admitted, but you can imagine that it's a very ambitious and very important project within the uh, European uh, neuroscience area. Uh, coming to more, I think, humane and more of interest to just about everybody, is another topic uh, which will be developed, uh, delivered by a woman scientist, Daphne Bevalier from Geneva, Switzerland, who is going to give us data about something we all wonder every day. Um, our children are spending long times in front of the computer, uh, playing different video games. Is this changing their brain? Is it affecting their brain? And is, is it doing harm? Or is it beneficial? Well, uh, Daphne Bevalier has studies and she will prevent, present her results showing that playing action video games appears to lead to a variety of behavioral enhancements in young adults. Action video game players outperform their non-action game playing peers on various sensory attentional and cognitive tasks. So it's not all that bad that um, parents are worried that their children are spending so much time playing video games on their computer. It might even be good according to these data. So that would be a very interesting topic that we're going to hear about. Um, there will be uh, Trevor Robbins from Cambridge, the UK, uh, will talk about impulsivity and compulsivity and their utility for understanding the etiology and possible treatment of drug addiction, very important social problem, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, and obsessive compulsive disorder, a number of very um, important nowadays uh, psychiatric problems. Uh, there's going to be also a number of presentations, both in plenary lectures and in the symposia and in the workshop about a very new technique that um, promises to be very powerful, which is called optogenetics. Uh, and it combines genetic techniques with optical engineering to manipulate specific cell types and neural circuits with light. So this is a very uh, cutting edge technology. And there are a number of um, presentations. There's a plenary lecture, there's a workshop, and I think there's also a symposium on that topic. Uh, as I said, these are the plenary lectures. There are 56 symposia, ranging in topics from history of neuroscience to, uh, for example, understanding the adolescent brain or understanding the basis of uh, important brain diseases like Alzheimer or Parkinson's disease or epilepsy. Um, so there's something for everybody. 
So, um, there are two big categories of uh, social life during the forum. One is the scientifico-social. So, for example, uh, there is a, a social uh, related to scientific advocacy. There's a social by the uh, Fence Journal, EJN. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a social by the Dana Foundation, which is a foundation dedicated to raising public awareness all over the world about brain and brain diseases. So a number of foundations are having a social along with their scientific event. Uh, there's going to be um, a social along with uh, the symposium on history of neuroscience and an exhibition on that. So there are a number of socials of that sort. There are a number of formal socials for the seniors, uh, like the presidential uh, dinner, which is going to be held uh, in a very nice museum uh, in Barcelona. Uh, and then there are the more fun socials, as I said, among which uh, the top, the epitome, is the jump the fence, uh, which is addressed basically to our younger colleagues, the students and the postdocs, but of course anyone with the right young spirit can join in. And of course people can go along, Barcelona alone, and uh, find their way around Barcelona, which has, I'm sure, I don't know if you've been there, but it's a very exciting city, a lot of bars and discotheques and restaurants, and just about anything one would want and at any financial level his, um, he can afford. So I think it's going to be a really, really fun uh, meeting, okay. uh, surpassing even the past ones. Um, the, past one, the last one was in Amsterdam, which again is a very exciting city, but um, I think this one will be even better because we've seen that each forum is better and more exciting than the one before it. So following this tradition, we expect that the Barcelona Forum will really be uh, a great uh, meeting and a meeting that everyone should uh, try to attend. There will be something like a job fair. It's not really a job fair, but people could re young people could register and meet prospective uh, employers, both from the uh, industry or public or private sector. Uh, in Europe, as you know, the public sector is really not very, not in a very good shape, particularly in the South. Uh, but the private sector is still active and maybe they're looking for young, talented, people and they could find job, prospective job uh, givers, as I said, from the industry, uh, from EU, from uh, publication houses, um, and then of course people looking for postdocs, which that will be the, the majority of, the, of job offers. Um, I have a pe I'm a professor of biology, uh, but my interests are in, obviously, in neurobiology, and particularly I'm very interested in the effects of early experiences in programming the brain. And actually, uh, Mike Meany, who is one of the uh, leaders in this field from Canada, uh, will be presenting a talk through the Ibsen Foundation Symposium, uh, which will deal with epigenetics. Um, epigenetics is a term used to describe um, changes in the DNA that affect not its content but its expression and that are transmitted from one generation to the other. So for example, he and others, among which my group, have shown that maternal behavior, good maternal behavior, good mothering, 
is very important uh, for the development of brain and results in an individual, an animal or a human, it has been shown in humans, an individual that can deal better with stress, is stress resilient, uh, learns better, adapts better, uh, and Meany's group has shown that if it's a female, um, it is also a better mother. So it's, as they used to say, like mother, like daughter. So uh, these are my interests, and actually I'm very interested to hear Meany's talk because uh, he's one of the leaders in this field.